just rip it, go. Bang! Woo! Today's episode, we're going to run through every single game, game by game, talk about the players that are on the fence. You might want to get into your lineup. You might not want to get into your lineup. You might want to sit. You might want to put on the IR. You might want to put on the waiver wire. You might want to put them anywhere. He's not talking in two speed, by the way. I mean, I would slow me down. You're going to have to switch speeds as each person. Each person has a custom speed for you. Today's episode, however, before we get into the game by games, is brought to you by Pristine Auction. And this Stefan Diggs signed helmet, this beautiful thing, is being given away for free to one of you guys who goes on to Pristine Auction and just signs up with the code BDGE. You don't even have to put money down. You get it for free. You get an entrance into the raffle for free. And then if you do so, you're also getting $10 towards your first auction on there, which you don't even need because the values of these auctions, the bar is low. They're down bad, as the kids say. All right. So go to Pristine Auction. You're going to get $10 towards your first raffle, plus an entrance into the Stefan Diggs signed helmet giveaway for free with code BDGE. Thank you, Pristine Auction. And thank you, Animal. For thank being, you, Pristine Auction. Being a good person sometimes. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. Uh, all right. We're going to jump right into it. Bye weeks this week. We got Baltimore, Cincinnati, New England, and the Jets. That's it. It's a light bye week. Uh, There's a lot of good players on those teams, though. Yeah, but. That you're probably relying on. Yeah, for sure. But that's why we're here to tell you who you can start now because these players you can't, right? Exactly. All right. Speaking of the Bills, helmet Stefan Diggs. We got the Bills. We got the Vikings at the Bills. Running back position, Devin Singletary projected 10.8 fantasy points. These are sleeper projections, half PPR. Well, I think the first thing we obviously need to address is Josh Allen's elbow. Yeah, I, we could talk about it for sure. Well, I, I think feel he's like, going to miss this game. I mean, game, it impacts so the entire game. I feel like what it's I mean. one of those things where if he's, if he's going to play, you start him. If he doesn't play, you don't. No, no, no. I don't mean him, but he affects everybody well, else. I got, like, I got a guy here. Right. Right. I'm just saying we can't go into anyone without understanding. We can't even go into the other team because then the game script gets all funky. I'm not shitting on your script. I just think we need to start with that. It's like the most prevalent thing in fantasy football this week. Says he's game to ga- uh, day to day right now. You believe him? You think he's telling lies? Yeah. Shoney Mick? I think he's, he's I think he's pretty hurt. And you think yeah. he's going to just try and play and see how he feels and figure out if he can play or not. I think the fact that they needed like second and third opinions on it Probably a little a little serious. Need to take it under consideration. He's a tough guy, though. I can see him playing through it. Not really yeah, affecting him much. He's going to probably but get like a shot toward and see how he can play. Like, what's the pain like when I play after I'm a little injected? If he plays, I'm just going to assume he's going to be really good. I'm yeah. just going to assume he's going to be um, Josh Allen. Thus, I'm comfortable starting Devin Singletary. You know, Naeem Hines had his first game there with him. James Cook still got more run. I think those two just kind of eat at each other. I don't think it really affects Devin Singletary. Really? I was going to say, if Josh Allen's out, I feel like it might boost Singletary a little bit just because, like, they're not going to want... Who is their backup, by the way? Case Keenum. Case Keenum. I didn't say I I wanted to... I was just saying in general. Like, I'm I'm starting Singletary probably regardless. I think he gets a boost, though, if Josh Allen doesn't play this week. That's fair. Slight boost, not a lot. I think he's like a top 24, top 20-ish fantasy back right now with the buys and stuff, regardless of who's at quarterback. All right, here's one that makes a difference, though. Gabe Davis, projected for 9.9 points somehow. He's a sit if Josh Allen doesn't play for Big me. Time. Yeah. Because he's a dude, he's like boomer bust where his boom games come because Josh Allen fucking seeds it down the field and hits him for 70 yards, whereas we're not really going to get that with Keenum. He's not like a separator like Diggs is, where I feel like quarterbacks kind of rely on those guys when they don't have the downfield explosiveness. Yeah, I would agree. Everything you said makes sense. Um if Case Keenum is playing, do we think that gives a little bit of a boost to a guy like Isaiah McKenzie? It's a good point. Yeah, I guess that does. I just maybe their game script just goes a little bit more towards the run game with Devin Singletary. So I have a hard time like buying into any of the pass catchers besides Stefan Diggs for this game if Keenum's under center. If Josh Allen does not play, Gabe Davis or Josh Palmer? I would still Palmer. Go to, really? Yeah. Keenan Allen are we assuming Keenan Allen's out? We don't know anything about Keenan yeah. Allen. No I'm assuming knows. Allen and Mike Williams are out. Only Keenan Allen knows, and he doesn't even know. Palmer had a big game last week. Palmer looked like yeah, pretty good. He had 15 points. He, he, I mean, he had... He had over 100 he, yards. He, yep. He seems nah, like he's the guy there. Ah, fuck it. Give me Davis. All I don't right. know. Something about Palmer is just not sexy. Gabe Davis or Devonta Smith? Devonta Smith. Depends who... You're saying if Josh if Allen's Josh out. Allen doesn't play. Yeah, it's Smith. Anyone who's like, I think is pretty good that has like a weekly upside, I'm, I'm probably going to play over Davis if Allen sits. Or, yeah, if Allen sits. Roger. All right. Um, Clemens. Staubach. Bang! On the Vikings side, Adam Thielen projected 7.8 points. Uh, he's questionable he's fine he missed he was like limited in his practice like last week, too. Every week now yeah he's okay yeah i mean he's he's like an unexcited i don't think he's top 70 yards or 72 yards this year so he's really really unexciting i'd like to just hope that you're kind of catching him on a touchdown week hopefully without josh allen though the game script might just be like kind of 
slow and ugly there. Slow this game down. Hawkinson is a big part of that that offense over there. So with Thielen, I'm not excited about it. There are definitely a lot of guys I would probably play over him, but he's a wide receiver, three flex play. Yeah, I'll start him. It's been consistently underwhelming. I don't think anything really changes. Bill's defense is pretty good. You don't think he's going to have an elite week this week? Uh, I think safe money is no. How about this? You got uh, your flex spot. It's not tight end premium, just normal league, half PPR. Adam Thielen or TJ Hawkinson? TJ Hawkinson. I like Hawk. I'll go with Hawk, too. All right. Hawkinson's projected 8.10 points. So, I mean, I I think Hawk is one of the – it's a tight end position. If you got him, you got to start him because there's really not a lot of other guys that have any upside at the tight end position. So, love Hawkinson, actually. I like him a lot more on the Vikings now. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. This is the game we should have started with. Seahawks (laughs) versus Bucks in Germany. It's the 9.30 a.m. game. Bro, on the waiver wire video, I was just (laughs) talking about, like, the bucks seahawks matchup. Yeah, the, I was you, editing that. And you got to be like, my filter. You got to be my screen there. The, the problem is, is you said at home, like you were, you were referencing the Bucks being at home way too many times to where it's like, Ooh. if I took it out. You didn't have you to take it out, but you could just throw something on the screen and be like, Nick's an idiot. They're playing in Germany. Because then I look like, a, I'm like, they're at home. How are they two and a half? Points? I was like going on and on. And yeah. Every comment's like, dude, they're playing in Germany. I'm like, yeah. thank you, Tony. Well, You're my editor. You have to be the editor in chief there. I was you have to look out for me. I was just hoping we could, you know, slide past it. Nobody would. Nobody else would notice. Like, yeah, if he doesn't know, maybe nobody. Well, that else definitely would. happened. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like if I took out every time you said the Bucks were at home, your sentence would just be like, "Bucks two. I just, I just told you that you didn't. Yeah, do- I know. Throw a note, but like, I don't know. Would have went a long way. Clearly, by the comment section, felt hey, per- look, felt personal. You see I'll what I did here? There. You see what I did here? Seahawks versus Bucks. In Germany, because yeah. I'm I'm that guy. I didn't know you I'm make that guy. You know you're, what? You're the notes guy. Editing duties. That's it. Give going it over to you. It won't get yeah. edited, but, <laughs> 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 but I won't let you make any mistakes. All right, let's go. All right, Leonard Fournette projected for 11.8 fantasy points. We're going up against the Seahawks in Germany. I Leonard know that's Fournette. a sleeper number, but I'll take the under. Okay. There, I know there's no so, under to be taken, but I'm just so out on Leonard so Fournette. Not, I was gonna say, is there a world where like you you don't start him this week? Like, say you Don't have, start him. are you going to start Leonard Fournette or, this might be reaching too much, but like Antonio Gibson, if McK- McKissick is out. Ooh. You know what I mean? Because you might, tough. you could have a team with like Saquon and Gibson and Fournette or something I was like going to go with one that maybe even a little tougher with. Yeah, probably. Um, I didn't have him off the top of my head. Yeah, I was going to go with Tony Pollard if Zeke doesn't play. Oh, or Tony Pollard. Pollard yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, easily. Zeke's playing though, I think. I think definitely. it's it's one of those, I keep seeing it's wishy-washy, so. Um, maybe in Germany, maybe in Tampa, we, we just don't know. Leonard Fournette. Yeah, I don't feel good. great about him. He's been he's been not great the last few weeks. I um, think the Bucks just turn it around at some point, and he's going to be a part of it. Really, I have I, a hard time believing that. I think they could turn it around, but I think it's going to be on the back of Rashad White. I think a changing is coming in the oh, backfield. It feels, it feels crazy. Rashad White, uh, six point six fantasy points projection. It's been the same thing every week. He gets fucking four points. He gets a little involved in the passing game, and then nothing else happens. I mean, the Bucks suck at running the ball in general, but it, the few times White gets mixed in there. He, I feel like he just has more explosiveness to it. It just to me it feels like Rams vibes, but with just better weapons. It just feels like the O line is just pulling everyone down right now and it's hard to execute an offense when your O line is so banged up and so injured. Like both teams are down to like their third string fucking tackles and guards and stuff like that. So I have little hope for the run game to get like reinvigorated, but I think at this point you're just hoping that Leonard Fournette catches like six or five balls in a game. All right, moving on to the tight end position. Mr. K. Dotton scored the first touchdown for himself for the Bucks last week. Projected five points. Is this the uh, tight end Tom Brady's been waiting for? Is he fin- are, you, are we finally getting the emergence of the Tom Brady tight end duo? Kind of, you know? I, I don't think he's worth a start this week. It feels like a trap play. He's got the big week, but he does have over 60 yards in two of the last three games. He got into the end zone. Uh, he's got at least four catches in three of the last five. So he's like a little bit serious about getting involved in the offense. I tend to lean towards a no on this one. I think there's probably a good, like, 10, 12 tight ends I'd start over him. But I think you could probably do worse. I think you could do worse based off last week. And I think Brady's a guy who, like, grows in chemistry with players. What about uh, Kate Otten or Robert Tunyon? I would I would go Otten over Tunyon. I think I would, too. I mean, Tunyon couldn't even get it done against the Lions. I was going to say, if, if, if I'm here out here thinking the, the Pats are on the decline, I don't, I don't even have a word to describe the Packers. Kate Otten or Evan Ingram at Kansas City. Ingram. Evan Ingram had a stinky game last week, by the way. Real I'll stinker, and he's questionable. I'll take Ingram. Still? Still? Is it questionable? I mean, Ask obviously, me again. If, he doesn't, if he doesn't play, yeah, we're not going to start him. <laughs> I don't know. I'm... But if <laughs> Nick's going to throw he... him out there. He doesn't <laughs> care. If Ingram is in the lineup for the Jags, he'll be in my lineup over Kate Otten. All right, Saints at Steelers, next game. George Pickens, is this 
the week, 8.7 points projection. We got no Chase Claypool. They had the bye. They can prepare. I think Pickens might have a blow-up week right now coming off the bye. I think I think they're going to center their offense a little bit around him. I, f- I feel like Deontay Johnson might see all of – is Lattimore even playing? He's been playing, right? I couldn't tell you. Looked it up. When it comes to the defensive players, I got no clue. Ruled out for Monday Night Football last week. No timetable to return two days ago, so I'd say no. Okay. Either way, I I, I think uh, – I'm a f- I'm a fan of Pickens this week for sure. I'll, I'll be starting him. I'm gonna start him in E Town. Get down. Not that I have any choice, but I'm I'm kind of glad to do so. Really, I think he's. I mean, I think he's worth a start. It's not something I I would necessarily be like glad to do. I just think Kenny Pickett kind of kind of holds back this offense a little bit right now. I don't know. Steelers just so. This feels like the narrative is like so set up obviously right now for us to look back and be like, yeah. That rookie wide receiver, second half breakout, coming off the bye, like that's when the explosion usually happens, second half of the year. I feel like it's this. yeah. That's there's fair. A, there is a guy there that Kenny Pickett is not holding back, and that's Pat Fryermuth. I mean, uh, I mean, he kind of is though. What do you mean for the tight end position? If your guy is getting seven to ten points every week, that's very good. Uh, you can't look at the tight ends like Travis Kelsey because he's a, he's a, in a tier of his own. Right, Fryermuth's but it's been not- solid. He has been solid, but he's not, he's not standing out from. He got nine like targets two weeks ago, seven targets last week, and then they had the bye now. Yeah, the like, problem is he hasn't scored a touchdown since week two. And yeah, like you said, pick the, it. You know, the team the, isn't scoring touchdowns, so right? It's not so like that's it's an like, issue. I mean, yeah, the Steelers aren't a good team. We know that, but I'm he, talking he's about one of the few guys that has like a good yardage floor for the most part. Yeah, I, I feel pretty good with, with Pat. I love Pat. Patty. How Patty dare P. you? I have to start Pat in a lot of leagues because I invested a lot in him. I'm not. I'm not excited about it at all. I thought you would have been with me on this one, but. Whatever. If it was like week three, yeah. All righty. So we got the Steelers backfield. You got Najee Harris. You got Jalen Warren. What are you doing there? I have Warren ranked higher than Harris this week. Are you week. serious? Yeah. That's he, crazy. It's the week he steals the role. Dude, he's more, he's he's just, to me, every time I watch, it's like Warren looks so much better. And then every report I've seen is just that he's going to be like way more featured in this offense going forward. I'm not necessarily excited to start either of them, but yeah, like I, I have very little faith in Najee Harris this week. I mean, I don't either, but just, you said... Warren ranked over Najee. Yes. I think that what he's leaning towards is that the Steelers are just kind of sick of Najee's bullshit, and they're going to let Jalen get a couple extra touches, and he's going to actually do something with if them. If they have the even touches, I would I would put a lot of money that Jalen Warren outproduces, outproduces Najee Harris. Let me see where I have them. I have, I have Jalen Warren as RB27. I have Najee as RB29. So it's two spots behind. They're both within like five spots of the flex rankings, but I think if all else equal, Warren just provides more upside because of his explosiveness and probably – Pass catching stuff. All right. Funny, we have a similar situation with the Browns and the Dolphins game. We got Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert. Jeff Wilson, who we know you guys were fans of last week. Defend yourselves. Go. What do you mean defend myself? I was right. talking about. Say whatever you want. You're asking us to defend ourselves with a fucking 10-foot shield. This is easy. 20 seconds. Go. Look, I was shat on. My name was dragged through the mud because I said that Jeff Wilson will soon take over the role as the 1A in the Miami backfield. And it didn't even take a week. He already played more snaps, was already more involved in this offense. I've been saying since they were both on the 49ers that Jeff Wilson is the better running back. It's Jeff Wilson's season. Here we go. More rushing yards, more targets, more snaps. Scored a touchdown. They're playing Cleveland Browns with the second worst fucking run defense in the NFL. Like, it's it's Will season. They're both start. They're both very playable, though. I'm, I'm a little hesitant on Raheem Mostert in the lineup, but if you're desperate enough, I would do it. Jeff Wilson, I feel really solid about as as like as a flex play though yeah i feel like the miami dolphins running backs are just something i don't want to be a part of you have them obviously you have to deal with it but like the wide receivers is all i care about in miami so bad take but other side of the ball browns there's one wide receiver here Donovan people's jones he's been quietly having some some sneaky good fantasy games over the past uh, three weeks i want to say four for four and 81 six for six and 71 four for five 74 and i mean he's actually been great for the past over, like five weeks over 70 yards in four out of the last five games he just hasn't scored touchdowns. That's really kind of where his is. Um, that's where he's capped. He doesn't get the touchdowns. That's just probably because Nick Chubb and you know the run game there in in uh, Cleveland. But still, Don Peoples Jones, solid flex play. Yeah, yeah, definitely think so. Miami's pass D is atrocious. Yes, that's they're why I really like this. Thirty second in coverage grade for PFF. They're they're bad. This and Miami puts up a fuckload of points. Cleveland's right. probably gonna have to score too. So yeah, DBJ is a strong flex play. All right, let's head over to Arrowhead Stadium where the Jaguars will. Uh, Probably lose to the Chiefs, I'm assuming. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, one of the few quarterbacks we'll actually talk about. What do you do with Trevor? Because you probably drafted him high. You probably still have him. You probably still have hope. But this is at Arrowhead. I think he's playable and startable. I don't really look at the Chiefs' defense as anything that's, like, crazy to overcome. Expect a lot of points. 50 and a half is the over-under. That's probably the highest ticket on the week, right? 
Isn't it crazy? Over unders this year are so low compared to last. The unders years. have been smashing. Yeah, yeah. a lot it's of back uh, quarterback play led by Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're not you're not starting Trevor anywhere. I mean, where I have Trevor, I have to start him. So I am playing him. But you know, in a one quarterback league, no, I'm trying to find someone else. I got Trevor up at. Oh, this is kind of ugly. You have him too high. Yeah, looking at it now <laughs> for sure. I have him as QB nine. I think I need to move him down to like QB thirteen. Yeah, I was just gonna say like Trevor Lawrence or Jared Goff against. The I was just Bears. looking at that Jared Goff, right? I feel like I would take T Law there. Really? What about Trevor Lawrence or Daniel Jones versus Houston? See, that's where. Okay, so I'll, uh, my QB nine at Trevor Lawrence. I have Kirk Cousins at QB ten because they're at Buffalo. Herbert at San Francisco. Like Herbert's been kind of terrible without Michael Williams and Keenan Allen. Then I have Daniel Jones versus Houston at home. But I think I could probably put Trevor behind most of those guys. Russell Wilson, I think even I at Tennessee, gonna, I would probably one. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to put T. Law behind Russ Wilson right there as my QB 13. But like he's on the borderline, he's playable for me. I mean, I guess this week with like Lamar and uh, Joe Burrow on by, you know, he he makes his way into like the top 12. Like comparing him to Daniel Jones, it feels like Daniel Jones has the safer floor, and their upside is relatively the same. I know Trevor Lawrence can find the end zone a couple times on the ground, but Ooh, like so I think DJ. that's what you're hoping hoping for. All right. This is where it gets a little tricky. The Chiefs, they got a bunch of wide receivers. Who do you start? Who, let's rank their wide receivers. You got Kadarius Tony, McCole Hardman, MVS, and Juju. Well, Juju's number one. Okay. Easily. Respect. Yeah. yeah City. Juju. Me. I think it's Juju and then no one else. Like, you're I, not playing anybody else. Hardman's been... Hardman's he, been pretty good. He's been good. I just don't know if it's fluky or not. It's 100%. I mean, he's been in the league for four years. We know yeah. he's, he's just a fluke. He's, he's just a career fluke. fluke. This is the breakout I've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah. And this is the year I've said, I don't want any Hardman. So, it's this is fluke it's coming, man, bro. Um, I, would, I would still go Juju, big tier gap, Miko, tier gap, MVS. I think Tony played like eight snaps last week. I think he's going to be so slowly eased into this offense that, like... They're going to try and, like, save him for, like, a playoff weapon, like... Yeah. Uh, MVS and Tony are both kind of not just not playable for me. Those are the rankings for the Chiefs wide receivers. Running backs for Chiefs, though, too. Quick do you rank. Want to, okay. Yeah, um, quick rank. Well, it's Clyde and then Pacheco, right? Like, what other... No? Are we playing... I mean, Pacheco's just, been terrible. You're going to start McKinnon over... I'm not starting... I don't. I think the point is, like, well, Clyde's playing the least snaps now out of everybody. McKinnon had a lot of pass-catching work last week. I think week. it's more of a... Pacheco or Clyde? Who, who I think it's more like Pacheco or no one. Like and I barely want Pacheco. <laughs> yeah, there's no chance I want to put Pacheco on my I don't want a now. running back from the Chiefs, but if I was forced to start one of the two, I would definitely lean Pacheco, Yeah, hoping that he's going to eventually take over the role. Yeah, that's it. Cool. All right, next game, Lions at Bears. we got two running backs here from one team. You actually could do all the running backs, but David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, what are you doing as a as an owner? Of, you probably have, I have both of these, so I don't know what to do. I think Demont's probably the play here. We saw last week this, he kind of like took back over the rule. This feels like a random explosion spot for David Montgomery where he's going to have one of those games like 11 for 125 and a touchdown and like 38 through the fucking air. And is everyone's the, like, it's his role again. Is the Khalil Herbert like uh, dream dead? I don't think so. No. I, I think in certain matchups like this one against the Lions, you can play Herbert. I think you can play both. I think I have uh, – let me see where I have Does him. Justin Fields run too fucking much to own a Bears running back? Possibly. <laughs> like, I got Demont all the way up at running back 17. I have Khalil Herbert at – 21. So, so I, that's a very startable running back. Yeah, they're both startable for me, but I do have Demon slightly ahead. Yeah, I think that's accurate. Is Swift playable? That's the question. Swift is at a point where, like, I need to see a good game out of him before he's back in my lineup. Because yeah. he's getting, like, six to seven touches a game. I also tops. just don't, I, like, the problem is Jamal Williams is there, and he's going to be the goal line guy. Unless Swift can run it in from, like, 20 yards out, I feel like they're as soon as they get to the five, ten yards, like, they're going to bring in Jamal Williams. He's been getting it all year. Why stop now? Obviously, you know, it ain't broke, don't fix it. The lines are broke, but like you need you know. like one of those vintage fifty yard plays that Swift is like breaking off every other play earlier on in the year, but him being injured feels like he doesn't really have the long explosiveness right now. All right, so. so David Montgomery or, or uh James Conner? David Montgomery. He scored uh, so many touchdowns versus them last year. He wasn't good, but like every game was like fucking seventeen for fifty, two scores. He's only scored one touchdown this year. So you know what that means. Yeah. So he's how, many due. Game, how many games has he missed though? Feels like he's missed like a he month. He played and his half. first game last week. And he came back, and I believe he had 10 points or 9. Yeah. Um, he got most of the work, though. He came back 9. as the horse. Yeah. I have I have Connor 16, Montgomery 17. So they're back-to-back for me. I do have Connor higher, though. Okay. Texans at Giants. Got two quarterbacks here. Do we want to talk about them? No? Any Giants wide receiver startable? I think Any it, Giants pass catcher? <laughs> Other than Saquon, we're not considering him a pass catcher. I mean, I again, I think you're just playing like whack-a-mole with the wide receivers. Like Slayton will have a big game, then we'll want him next week, then it'll be Wandell. Um, not, wide receivers, this, this whole game is kind of gross. Obviously, Damian Pierce, you start. Tanner wide Hudson. receivers. Tanner Hudson, yeah, backup yeah. tight end. Ooh, sure. 
Tanner Hudson. Never heard of her. He was you on should, the Bucks. You should probably pick him up. He was a Brady disciple. Um, all Go. right, so the wide receivers for the Texans, though. Cook's probably not going to play. Nico Collins, they're both questionable. I don't think either of them play. If they don't play, Chris Moore projected for 3.9 points, but he had 12 and a half last week against Philly. If they're all out, I'm, I'm, I don't hate Chris Moore. He looked pretty good last week. I do think Cooks is going to play, though. He was back in practice too. this week. So really? I, I'd, I'd, I'd play Cooks. I'm not excited about it, but Cooks is a guy I'd, I'd, you know, I'd forgive. All right, what about Chris Moore? I have to be in a deep league. Yeah. Start him like a 10-man league with your high school friends. <laughs> That's a deep league for you. Yeah, all right. right. <laughs> At this point, it is, yeah. Next game, great game on the slate. Two really awesome teams. We got the Broncos at the Titans. What are we doing with Russell Wilson? Are we starting to trust him again? Is there some life brought back to the Russ man? I could play him this week. Titans' yeah. pass defense is not good. Mm-hmm. Not good at all. Russ has been banged up most of the year, so maybe coming off the bye week, he's a little more healthy, and I'm here for it. Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers versus Dallas? Aaron Rodgers is unstartable, really? more, even more than Russell Wilson. I was going to wait till we got to the Packers game to make fun of him, but I figured I'd bring him up now. No, I'm with that. I think Rodgers is like fucking QB 23 for me this week. Yeah, it's really tough. All right, um, a Division one. Russell Wilson or Derek Carr versus Indy with the Ooh. Jeff Saturday coaching staff. Wilson for me. Right. Really? Yeah. I think Coming I'm off the bye, I'm going to take the Broncos. Come on. Come on. Don't be swayed by, by whatever. Come on. Nah, All right. I'm the Broncos go pass catchers, though. This is where it gets interesting because there's really no um, consistency here this season. You got Cortland Sun projected for 9.6 points. I'll play both of them. Cortland and Judy. They're both projected for basically 10 points. We're, we're starting both of them, no problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm playing them. Like, it, it is kind of a problem if I have to play them, it feels like. Like, I don't think either of these guys are that good. They seem limited in this offense. Cortland Sutton or Michael Pittman? Oh, shit. Nah, uh, not Pittman. Sutton. Yeah. Cortland Sutton or Deontay Johnson? Give me Deontay. Against, uh... Deontay's playing New Orleans. That's a good one. I have Deontay 27, Sutton 28. Deontay should get, like, a dozen targets at least. Last one, Cortland Sutton or Jared Judy? Fortunately, Judy. I'm just going to ride the wave that's that's forming right now. He's been there. playing. He's been better. He's been better. He's been better. He's been better. <laughs> All right. That's your victory lap. Um, Both and then guys have been terrible. Greg Dolch, I don't want to really talk about it, but if, if you have him at the tight end yeah. position, he's definitely a great start. I 100%. think tight end one for me. Yeah. yeah. Startable for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right. Colts at Raiders, we're going to skip this whole game. I don't think there's anyone to talk about. Love it. Right? Like, you don't start Ellinger, start Carr, start Jacob, start Devontae, but, like, there's no one else to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I think the one guy maybe worth talking about is Pittman just because you probably – you're you're probably in a position where you, you're relying on him, but you probably can't. So there's probably a lot of guys that you wouldn't expect to start over Pittman that you probably should. All right, real quick then. Pittman or Rondell Moore? Moore. Uh, yeah. Pittman or Pickens? Pickens. Pickens. All right. Yeah. I have Pittman at 33. I got Pickens right, right above him. Pittman Darnell or- Mooney or Pittman? Mooney. Sneaky son of a You have to answer that one because I, I didn't gonna, want I was going to take Mooney. Okay. It's because it's, it's hard. Pittman's name seems so elite, but it's just production yeah. is nowhere there. All right. Cardinals at Rams. We already talked about James Conner. Uh, Starting him. 71% of the snaps last week. He's back. Uh, no worries. Rondell Moore, I think we all like. I think he's startable. He's, he's been, he's shot he's been a lot very of consistent yeah. the past three weeks, which is what I like to see. Tyler Higby, really, really terrible game last week. He got you zero points. Well, me zero points, and that hurt me. Uh, but I'm going to have to start him again. Dude, I think Matthew Stafford's not going to play this game. If he doesn't play, I like him even more. You like Higby more? Yeah, Stafford fucking it's out of control. That is so <laughs> egregious. I, I have to start Higby, so I mean, I'm looking no, for don't. the... I yes, started I Higby in the bash last week. Higby feels like a guy I'm just going to keep ranking. I actually have him at 15 this week, so I feel kind of good about that. But he's a dude that I, we're just going to keep hanging on to the first like four or five weeks and be like, oh, he's due, he's due, he's due. And it's like, maybe Higby's just the guy he's been for the last five years. I, I feel like Stafford's still dealing with an injury from this offseason with his elbow. Well, right. was, there was a report that came out super recently, no? That well, said something about Stafford? But it was about a concussion. Yeah, a concussion it was weird. Yeah. It was, oh. like, super late. Like, a doctor came in, like, days later after their game. It was like, yo, that one hit that you took, you might be feeling it, right? He's like, you know what, Doc? <laughs> yeah. I think I am. Yeah. Give me a guy like Cole Komet over Higby if Matthew Stafford doesn't play. Yeah, that's fine. Cole uh, Komet's so gross, but against the Lions, he could fuck I liked him a lot coming down. into the year, but then I got off him. All right. Cam Akers and uh, Darrell Henderson. Nope. Look, like the, neither of these guys are getting the snaps that you need. Like, what I'll do you start Daryl Henderson this this week. Really, yeah. you have to. He's getting fifty percent of the snaps versus Cam Akers nineteen. Like, they can't run the ball though, for sure. But if if Stafford's out, maybe they try. I don't know. There's nothing good about it. There's nothing like you like about it, but you have to do it. Maybe. Um, the has been the best looking one. I think Malcolm Brown mispracticed again yesterday too. So not that that's like awesome, but 
It helps a little. You, listen, you're looking for any little bit of positivity. Henderson or Pacheco? Henderson. Henderson. Yeah, but that's just because Pacheco is such a bad option. Henderson or Hunt? Hunt. Yeah, I'd probably go Hunt. Henderson or Melvin Gordon? Gordon. Gordon. Gordon against um, Tennessee, yeah. yeah. Tennessee's got a really good run, D. Yeah, they do. Jeffrey Simmons is a beast. I'm still going to go Gordon, though, no, I think. Beast. All right, two games left. Buckle up. Three games left. Three games left. Buckle up. <laughs> Cowboys at Packers. Aaron Rodgers, unstartable. Especially against the Cowboys defense, I'd say. This is, a, is this the game mode where Aaron Rodgers is like, fuck y'all, I still got it? No way. This is the game he gets sacked by. Like this is the that. game where we see Jordan oh, no. Love. All right, that's no. possible. Um, Michael Gallup, 8.8 .8 fantasy points. Nope. I feel like people are they're trotting him out there every week, though. This He's one of those guys where, like, his projection is 8.8, .8, and he probably has not hit that once this year yet. He had 6.9 last week. He went 4 for 6, 49 yards. Yeah, no, he's not in my lineup. No chance. All right. Cowboys, Packers, Packers, the running backs. A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones. What do you do? I think it's kind of simple. I think if Aaron Jones plays, he's in your lineup. I think if he doesn't, Dillon's in your lineup. He's got an eyelash in my eye. Shut the whole production down. <laughs> You're crying, dog. It's yeah, all right. Dude, but Dillon, Dillon is not in your lineup if Jones is healthy. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's simple. What about the flip side of things? If Zeke plays still Pollard trust, versus Zeke. I still trust Pollard more right Me now. Me too. I yeah. have him ranked a little bit he's higher. Just, he's more explosive. He can just do more. You think you can play both, though? Because the Packers' defense has been, like, their entire team has been terrible. Yeah. Uh, it's it, like a game flow thing, but at that point, like, I don't even think they would put Zeke in. They'd probably put, like, um, who's their third string guy? Like, that. if they're up by, like, a lot, I think they're going to kill the Packers. I mean, listen, for them to sit their running backs, they'd have to be up by, like, 21, like, the Lions should have been up by 21, but they, they're Lions. That's too much. I'm telling you. We'll see. Happen. I'll, yeah, I'll start Pollard. I'll, I'll start Zeke a little bit more hesitantly, but if I need to start both, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily hate it. Uh, what do we got? Chargers, Niners. Chargers and Niners. Tony's uh, favorite team. Josh Palmer, we spoke of. We all like him. Um, even if Keenan Allen uh, arrives from his grave to play. <laughs> He's I not think. playing. He's not, don't, yeah. worry, don't even fucking talk about him. All right. Brandon Ayuk. Startable. Very startable. Yeah. Love Ayuk him. or Palmer. Ayuk, give me Tebow's going to be back. It doesn't matter. Everybody in that offense I want part of I'm the so Niners offense. I'm slightly worried that with Debo back, C-Mac, Ayuk, Kittle, there's just a lot. Like, is it, I feel like you're going to be playing roulette now. Like, what's it going to be? I, I don't Ayuk's think, week or not? I don't think the arrival of CMC downgrades any of the pass catching options. I think it just consolidates all the running back production into one guy. I think it definitely hurts Debo. I, we haven't seen all them together yet yeah, on the field. That's fair. I, so okay, I guess. when I when I say that though, I also I'm counting like the production of Wilson, the production of Debo rushing. The half of Debo does go with McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. It's pretty but, impactful. Yeah, yeah, but I don't like I don't like downgrade Ayuk or Kittle or you know Debo yeah. in the past. I, I think you start all the guys obviously. Like Ayuk's yeah. in your lineup, Debo's in your lineup, Kittle's 100%. in your lineup, C Max in your lineup. Chargers defense has also been pretty fucking bad. They're bad. Yeah. So you yeah you start Palmer, you start Eckler, uh, Gerald Everett. I'm assuming we're fans of tight end one. Yeah. Yeah. Are you starting Herbert this week? Like, he's someone that, yeah. I, if I was in a, Q, a one QB league, which I am in, and Herbert's one of my quarterbacks, I'm going to be looking for other options, to be completely honest. For real. He has no upside this year. Like, none. I mean, his wide receivers are dead. It's definitely, it definitely That's hurts fantasy, him. Yeah, um, like, I mean, Herbert or Tom Brady? Tom Brady got Seattle. I would probably still go Herbert. The problem is, is there's no one you're going to just pick up now. That's going to be better than Herbert. Yeah, but it's more like, like if you, you have right, him on right, your right, bench. Right. You just like like no reason to. Start I mean, there's him. got okay. So for instance, I do have Herbert as my QB ten, but like the three guys behind him, Daniel Jones, Russell Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, like three, those three guys might be on the waiver wire in one quarterback. Honestly, piece. like Daniel Jones at Houston seems like a juicy one. Versus at home yeah. versus Houston, that's what I'm saying. Like people that's, are going to yeah. be deciding between Daniel Jones against Herbert at San Francisco. I think Herbert's still still a tier above those guys. I'm yeah, not because he can always dump one off to Eckler. Like yeah, that's the, that's the beauty of it. But I mean. Yeah, it, it's, maybe, maybe it's you tough. found yourself with like, I mean, this one's easy at this point, but like maybe you took Herbert kind of early and then Justin Fields, like obviously you're playing Justin Fields yeah. over Herbert, but I just don't think for the most part, if you didn't like draft a second quarterback. Guess where Fields is in my rankings, QB this week? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say he's more above, over. That wasn't how we're doing Okay, this. four. That was well done. Keep it three. <laughs> Damn. So we're all wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well done. You're all wrong. Well, he like he hit the nail on the head there. He's like, I'm gonna go higher. All right, because I have to. I'm gonna go QB four. So technically, your last place at the table right now. Whatever. Yeah. Do you have a Tua or Fields higher? Fields three, Tua four. Okay. Um. All right. Last game on the slate. We have Commanders at Eagles. Obviously, you're starting Goddard, Sanders, AJ Brown. 
the question comes to Devontae Smith, who has been, I mean, I, I feel like we've gotten the same kind of thing every week between Brown, Goddard, Smith. It's like one guy does awesome, one guy does pretty well, and one guy just lays a stinker pretty mm -hmm. much. More often than not, it's Devontae Smith. I think, like, he's probably still a better option because of that weekly upside than most guys. He's like the wide receiver 27, 28 probably, but that's going to land yourself in a lot of flex lineups, I think. 10.3 projected. I, I feel good starting him. He's just, he's the wide receiver two in a really nice offense. You can overthink it, and you can bench him for... Other guys that I have him in a I league, and the only times I've played him are we are the weeks that he's done really poorly. So it makes me like <laughs> super fucking hesitant to put him into the lineup. Yeah. On the flip side, though, you have like Terry McLaurin's probably the only startable wide receiver on that end because the Eagles' pass defense is fucking ferocious. Curtis Samuel had a big game last week, but that was only because he got that like lucky hell mary. Yeah. So I don't think you start him, but Terry or Devontae Smith. Terry's been better, has a Terry. big, better target share, but gets a much tougher matchup. Terry, yeah, you got to go Terry just because he's he's safer. Yep, uh, Gibson and Robinson. Gibson's been probably playing a little bit more, looking way better than Robinson has. I don't know if I really want to play Robinson. Or even, like, Gibson, I don't want to either. It just feels like a bad matchup for both. I mean, it is a bad matchup for both. Robinson's moved significantly down my ranks, for yeah. sure. If you're going to play one, for me, it's Gibson. Uh, McKissick has no timetable for return. He's the one who's getting the pass catching work. So I actually think Gibson's kind of like a sneaky good play against the Eagles this week. That just got torched by a lot of passes. Yeah. Maybe catch a lot of passes, but also I don't. I think the Eagles' run defense, is. it's probably going to be more of a funnel that way because of Jordan Davis being out. Pierce ripped him up. Obviously, Gibson's not Pierce, but, you know, he could be a Walmart version. I like I like Gibson a little bit this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I have to start him, so I will be starting him, and I feel okay about it. All right. Well, I feel okay about this this episode. <laughs> Bang! Make sure you go to pristineauction.com. Use code BDGE when you sign up for a free entrance into the raffle and $10 towards your first auction. Thank you all for joining us. <clears throat> vagina vagina us. us for vagina <laughs> us today. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the button that looks like this below. Also, if you're going to be in Penn State this weekend, where are we? Lot 12? We are lot in Lot 12. 12. Come tailgating. to fucking Lot 12 and get the bang! Kind Maybe. of a late notice, but pull up. I was about oh, to yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're what? No, no one's watching until the end here. You never know. Maybe they're already going to be there. Like, oh shit, didn't know. Yeah, yeah maybe they're gonna they were gonna pull up at lot thirteen. Or maybe they make a move maybe they go to bit. Penn State. You know, it's possible, right? Maybe they shut the podcast off at the thirty four minute mark and didn't even fucking hear this. <laughs>